All right, we are going to start on section 3.3. Uh, this is the product and quotient rule. So we're just going to write out the theorem. So we say theorem, product rule. So we'll say if f and g are differentiable, then their product fg is differentiable. And then also we get a, a formula fg prime of x will equal f, uh, f of x left alone g prime of x plus g of x left alone times f prime of x. Okay, so we'll look through, we'll do a couple examples with this. So first example. They tell us that uh, h of x is equal to x squared times 9x plus 2. So I want to view this as two things multiplied together, and I want to call the first of those things f and the second of those things g. So I'm going to let f be this x squared, and I'm going to let g be this 9x plus 2. So then when I want to write out what is h prime, uh, we'll get the f of x left alone times the derivative of g of x. The derivative of 9x is 9. The derivative of 2 is 0, so we just get 9. Plus, now we leave the g of x part alone and we multiply it by the derivative of the f part. Derivative of x squared by the power rule is 2x. So that is our answer. I, for this class, I'm not going to make us FOIL the stuff out. If you check your answers against the back of the book, it is FOILed out in the back of the book. But uh, on the free response parts on the AP test, they don't make you FOIL everything out, and it just takes a ton of time. So we're going to let you all leave answers kind of in this uh, format here where uh, you just kind of write it out what the rule says and then just kind of stop that that point. So we'll look at example two. Um, example two wants us to use the product rule to find the derivative. So they give us basically y equals um, 2 plus x to the negative 1. And then we're going to multiply that by x to the 3 halves plus 1. So this is, uh, they want us to basically find the derivative, we'll say dy dx. So this is what we're trying to do here. So I am going to have to use the product rule to do this. And I'm going to say, all right, this first parenthesis stuff is what I'm going to consider my f. And the stuff in the second parenthesis is what I'll consider my g stuff. So dy dx will equal, leave the f stuff alone. So again, if we look at our product rule, f is left alone, then derivative of g. So f is left alone. Then I take the derivative of g. So the derivative of 3x squared, or sorry, x to the 3 halves power, we pull the power down, so the 3 halves power pulls down, we get x to the power of 3 halves minus 1. 3 halves minus 1 would be 3 halves minus 2 halves, which is a single half. And the derivative of 1 is 0. So this is f left alone, this is g prime, plus, now we'll write the g left alone, 
times the f prime. Derivative of 2 is 0. When we take the derivative of x to the negative 1, the negative 1 comes down. We get x to the negative 1 minus another one, which is x to the negative 2. Again, I won't make you multiply stuff out. We'll say that's our answer. Okay. So, third example. They want us to find what is DDT evaluated at, or T squared e to the T. So they want us to calculate this. So in this, I'm going to call t squared my f, and I'll call my e to the t, that'll be my g value. So now I've got to calculate this. We'll say, all right, this is going to equal f left alone, and then derivative of g. When you take g's derivative, e to the t is its own derivative. Then we add to it. Now, so we did f times g prime. Now we're going to do g left alone, which is e to the t, times f prime. The derivative of t squared is 2t. And that is our answer for that one. Okay. Um, we're going to derive the uh, product rule from the uh, definitions. Uh, the limit is h approaches 0, f of x plus h times, uh, or minus f of x, all that over h. So we'll say if you had fg prime of x, that would be equivalent to limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h times g of x plus h minus f of x times g of x, all that over h. So what I'm going to do is we'll say, well, that should be equivalent to this. If I just added a 0 in between, just adding nothing does nothing, so the top part should still be the same as that. And then the form of zero I'm going to use will be f of x plus h times g of x minus f of x plus h times g of x minus f of x g of x. So f of x plus h times g of x minus f of x plus h times g of x. These two add up to 0. So the 0 is sort of becoming those two terms. So I'm going to regroup some stuff. And I'm going to break uh, the limit across two things. So I'm going to keep this term. Minus this term. Then I'm going to keep this term minus this term. And let's see. Out of the top part, this has an f of x plus h. That has an x, f of x plus h, so I can factor it out, kind of write it off to the side. On this one, they both have a g of x, so I can factor the g of x out and leave it off to the side. 
we let the limit of h goes to 0, this part right here goes to f of x. This part right here, limit as h goes to 0 of g of x plus h minus g of x all that over h is g prime of x. Limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h is f prime of x. Then we got the times g of x. So if we just reorder these terms, we get the product rule that we have up there at the top. So we can kind of see that from a definition of a derivative, uh, you're able to generate the product rule formula from that. So we just added zero, brought in this special form of zero because this minus this is zero. Then we could group the first and the third terms together to become that. And the second and the fourth group together to become this. And then the rest of it just kind of works out. So next up, we're going to look at the uh, quotient rule. Then we've got a couple quick examples there. And then we'll say that's probably good enough for, uh, for what we need to do with this. So this will be theorem, the quotient rule. So we say if f and g are differentiable, then f divided by g is differentiable. Uh, for all x such that the bottom's not zero. Formula is f divided by g prime of x is bottom left alone times derivative of the top minus top left alone times derivative of the bottom all that over the bottom left alone squared. And I found sometimes writing this in words uh, makes it easier to memorize. So if we kind of view this as the top and this is the bottom, and we want to take the derivative, uh, bottom left alone times the top, top's derivative minus top left alone times the bottom derivative, all that over the bottom squared. Sometimes kind of memorizing it this way helps you keep track of it better. Um, so this is the formula we're going to kind of be dealing with for the rest of the section. And just like the uh, other part of the section, I'm not going to make you multiply everything out unless you just really want to do that. So let's look at a couple examples real quick here. is example four. Give us f of x is equal to x over one minus x squared. They want us to find f prime of x. So we'll say, all right, top is just x, the bottom is that whole thing. So f prime of x equals bottom left alone times the derivative of the top. If the top is x, the derivative of x is one minus top left alone times the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of one is nothing. The derivative of negative x squared is negative two x to the first power, which we can write as just negative two x. Then that's all divided by the bottom squared. And that's it. Okay, so let's see here. Just realized I'm... Okay, um, now we're going to do another example or two from the book, and then we'll uh, wrap the section up. So next example they give us. They say, 
All right, for this example six, want us to find uh, the tangent line uh, to the graph of f of x equals 3x squared plus x minus 2, all that over 4x cubed plus 1, at x equals 1. Okay, so tangent line equation is y minus f of a equals f prime of a times x minus a. And for this problem, a is 1. So we're going to put 1 in for a. Okay, so let's first of all figure out what's f of a, which would be what is f of 1 f of 1 would be 3 times 1 squared uh, plus 1 minus 2 over 4 times 1 cubed plus 1. So I'm just putting 1 in for all the x's in the equation. It's 3 plus 1 is 4, take away 2 is 2 over 4 plus 1 is 5. So we get 2 fifths plugs in for f of a. So now we've got to figure out what's f prime of a, and then what happens if I put 1 in for all the x's there. So f prime of x is going to be bottom left alone times derivative of the top, which is going to be, let's see, derivative of x squared is 2x, so 3 times 2x is 6x, plus derivative of x is 1, plus derivative of negative 2 is nothing. So it's bottom left alone, derivative of top. So again, what we're trying to do, bottom left alone, derivative of top, minus top left alone, derivative of bottom, all that over bottom squared. So minus the top left alone, which is this, times the derivative of the bottom, which will be 12x squared. And then the derivative of 1 is 0. And that's all over the bottom squared. So we got f prime of x. I need to find f prime of 1, though. I don't really want to recopy this entire thing. So I'm just going to say, like, imagine putting a 1 in for every single x that we have. Picture putting a 1 in for all those x's. And then let's see what numbers we would get back. And then maybe we can just get it that way. So we get 4 plus 1 is 5 times 6 plus 1 is 7 minus, see that'd be 3 plus 1 is 4, take away 2. So 2 times, see 1 squared would be 12. All that over 4 times 1, so 4 times 1 is 4 plus 1 is 5, so that'd be all over 5 squared. So this will equal 35 minus 24 over 25, which is 11 25ths. So 11 25ths is what replaces f prime of a. And then to get our overall answer, we need to recopy this down with the correct things plugged in. So the formula is y minus 2 fifths or sorry, not the formula, the equation of the tangent line is y minus 2 fifths equals 11 20 fifths times x minus 1. That's the formula of the equation, or it's the equation of the tangent line in point slope form. Okay, so we got that. Now, uh, the next thing is final problem here. It's going to be a little word problem, so let me scroll up and get some space to work with here. So done with that one. Let's scroll up to the top. And let me just get some space. Uh, clear up some space to type on for a bit. 
or the sword problem. Okay, so our word problem that we're going to finish off with. It's example seven. And we basically say uh, the power of battery supplies to an apparatus depends on the internal resistance of the battery. So we'll say the power of battery supplies uh, depends on the battery's internal resistance. For a battery of voltage V and internal resistance R, the total power delivered by an apparatus of resistance capital R is this. So they give us this equation and say in this equation, in this equation they tell us P is total power, V is voltage, R is internal resistance, capital R is the apparatus's resistance, so it's just kind of resistance of the thing that's being powered. Okay, so we've got all that. Wants us to do th uh, two things. Part A wants us to find the derivative of P with respect to capital R, assuming V and R are constants. So to do this, since this is a divisional form, um, we'll have to do a couple things here. So we'll equal the bottom left alone r plus r squared times the derivative of the top. Now if, if uh, v squared is a constant, taking the derivative of the top with respect to r would be like taking the derivative of 8 times r, which would just be 8. So, so we have v squared times r. v squared we're treating as a number. r is the variable. So when you take the derivative of r, you leave the v squared behind. So we get that minus make sure I put minuses in all of these. Okay, we did. So it's the uh, part here minus, uh, it's going to be the derivative. So we did bottom left alone, derivative of top. Now we need top left alone. And we need to take the derivative of the bottom. To take the derivative of the bottom, I need to FOIL the bottom part out. When I FOIL it out, the bottom's capital R squared plus 2R capital R plus little r squared. So this is the foiled out form of the bottom. So when I take the derivative of uh, R squared with respect to R, I get 2R plus. When I take the derivative of 2 little r times capital R, the uh, capital R drops and it leaves the 2 times a little r left over. And since r squared is a constant, the derivative of a constant is zero. And then that's all over r plus r. It's squared, we're gonna square it, so that's gonna be to the fourth power. So here is our derivative with respect to r. Part b says, where is the graph well, where in the graph of P versus R is the tangent line horizontal? So let's set this whole equation here equal to zero. Because the tangent line is horizontal means the slope of tangent line 
equals zero. And the slope of the tangent line is the derivative. So we're really saying where is dp dr equal to zero. So we're setting zero equal to this giant mess. And then we'll have to kind of look through, see what's happening. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply the bottom part out. When I multiply the bottom part out here, and multiply the bottom part out over here, here it cancels, and out over here you multiply it by zero, so we get zero equals r plus r squared times v squared minus v squared r times 2r plus 2r. So there's a couple different ways to solve this. Um, the way I think we talked about it in class and the way I kind of think about it is let's, uh, let's look at the first term here and say r equals what would make this term right here equal to zero. Well, if I plugged in instead of r, if I plugged in a negative r, negative r plus r would make this zero. Zero squared is zero, so zero times whatever the v is, that whole term would be zero. So we're gonna look, we're gonna look at, so we're gonna look at r equals negative r. So this term will end up equaling zero if r equals negative r. Let's see what does this term over here do? Well, this will become negative two r plus two r, which is zero, times the rest of this stuff would be zero, so that would make that whole term over here equal to zero. So just kind of looking at the form and kind of seeing what we'd need to create a zero, we found r equals negative lowercase r. This will, uh, if that occurs, hang on, the book has a different, Let's see here. The book has kind of a different take on stuff. But I think if you let r equal negative r, that looks to me like in this equation, that should, uh, that should work. What the book does is they kind of foil everything out. Let me get rid of this. And we'll, we'll look at what the book does to, uh, to finish up. So. I got just kind of looking at this, negative r would, r equals negative r, that works. Um, oh, I guess I should think about resistance. Resistance is a physical value, resistance has to be positive. So I messed that up in, uh, in class. You can't, your resistors, they're either zero or they have a number. You can't have a negative resistance that doesn't mean anything in terms of like a uh, regular circuit. It might, it might mean something in a AC circuit. So I think in a regular DC circuit, a negative resistance doesn't, I don't think that has meaning. So, okay, this one's gonna be out. So I guess what we're gonna have to do is quit avoiding it. We'll just foil everything out, see what happens, so. Let's let the v squared distribute. Let the v squared r distribute. See what we get. Whoops, 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 just kidding. Can't distribute this v squared here. Got to foil this out first. On this side, we are okay because there's no power here. We are okay to distribute. Should just be a minus. 
So two v squared r squared plus two r v squared r, I guess. And then let's FOIL this out, or distribute this out, see what happens. Oh, and this negative this negative applies to this whole term, so it's going to have to distribute also. So that should make that there a negative because it's negative this entire second term. So whatever that second term breaks up into, we're going to have to negate both parts of it. Okay, so I think we've got it down where everything's correct at this point. Um, we got 2r v squared r and a negative 2r v squared r, so those should cancel. We have a v squared r and a minus 2 v squared r. So we'll say, all right, 0 equals little r squared times v squared. A v squared r squared minus 2 v squared r squared will be a single negative v squared r squared. So this 0 equals r squared minus r squared times v squared. This is a difference of squares. All right, there's a difference of squares. So this will equal r plus r times r minus r. All that times v squared. And the only way that'll equal zero is if this middle term, or I guess this term here would make sense if r equals negative r. This term here makes sense if r equals positive r. We said r can't equal negative r because resistance has to be positive. So this term here will be zero when r equals positive r. And after a bunch of work, we finally got it. So. We'll stop there and say good enough for, uh, for that.